Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is creating a basic cell shading or cell shaded material as you can see on screen now. So we're going to be creating a post process material which will give us this cell shading effect like so. So you can see that we have this robot here, the one on the left has no cell shading applied to it, the one on the right does. The same with this cube here, the left has no cell shading, the right does, and you can see these walls as well, again left none, right it does, and also some of these objects over here too. So it's a bit of a subtle difference at the moment, but that's probably just because of the lighting I've got set up and because I've not got a lot of cell shading in here. It's a bit of a subtle difference, but you can tell, and so this is what we're we'll going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create our cell shading material. So I'm going to hit control space to open up my content browser, right click, create a new material, and I'm just going to simply name this one cell shading matte, like so, opening it up straight away. Now in here, before we do anything else, we want to change two things. In the details panel on the bottom left, what we want to do is change the material domain from surface to post process. So we can actually use this as a post process material and that also only gives us access to the emissive color. And then also if we search for post process, what we want to do is change the blendable location from after tone mapping to before tone mapping. And that will just give us a much nicer look for our cell shading. You can try it with after if you want to, but you will most likely not like how it looks. And so once we've got that set up, we can actually start doing some of the nodes for this. So let's just go all the way over to the left to give us plenty of space. And what we're going to do first is set up the lighting buffer. So I'll explain more about that when I'm doing it. So we're going to right click and get a scene texture, like so. And we're going to change the scene texture ID to be post processing input zero. So we want the post process input of our scene texture. Then out of color, what we're going to get is a desaturation. As we don't need the color info for this, it just needs to be grayscale. So that's why we're desaturating it. Then we're going to select these and duplicate them. So control C, control V. Then we're going to change the scene texture ID from post process input to diffuse color. Again, leaving in the desaturation. Then we're going to get the desaturation from the post process input, get a divide, making sure that goes into A, and then B is going to be the desaturation of our diffuse color scene texture. So we're dividing those two like so. Then out of the divide, what we're going to do is get a clamp, leaving the values as 0 and 1. So this division is going to be clamped between 0 and 1. And then this is going to go into an if node. Because what we're going to do is compare this value here. And what we're comparing it to is if we hold down 1 and left click, we can get a scalar parameter, setting that value to 0 0.5, connecting that into B. So what we're doing here is basically getting the brightness and comparing that to the value of 0.5. So what we need to do now is get another scene texture, changing this one to be diffuse color once again, so we could have just duplicated that one, but we've got diffuse color. And then the color of this is gonna go straight into A is greater than B, so the one just beneath B. And then we'll come out of color again, and we're gonna get a multiply, and we're gonna multiply it by 0.5. Or you could alternatively get a divide and put in two. We just want to halve it. And this is gonna go into A is less than B. So what we're doing is if A is greater than 0 0.5, we're gonna be using the normal color, the full brightness. And if it's going to be less than 0 0.5, we're gonna be using half brightness. So if I were to select these two here and hit C to comment it, what I'm gonna name this is A greater than B equals color at full brightness so the light areas of the map and then if a is less than b that will be the color at half brightness so the dark areas of the map and let's just extend this out so we can actually read it and you'll notice this is what we've got here so i hope that makes sense as to what we're doing and why we're doing it and then this up here is like i said is going to be the lighting buffer so we're just calculating how bright each material and texture and object is. So again, I hope that makes sense. Then after this, what we want to do is we want to make sure that this is going to exclude the skybox. So there's not really an easy way of doing that other than just getting the skybox color and using it. So what we're gonna do is get another scene texture. We're gonna be using these a lot. So scene texture like so. 
This one is going to be scene depth this time. Out of color, we're going to get a divide, and we're going to be dividing this by 100,000. So we've got 100,000 there, like so, so it should be 1e plus 0,5. Out of this, we're going to get another desaturation, as again, we only need the grayscale values. And this is now going to go into another if, so we want to once again compare some values. B is again going to be a scalar parameter, so hold down 1 and left click, and the value of this is going to be 1, with that going into B there. If A is greater than B, we want to just do a post-process input, so we'll get a scene texture, setting this to post-process input 0, with the colour being A is greater than B, and if A is less than B, we want this to be the other if statement we just created down here with our lighting buffer. So let me just move this a bit as well so it makes a bit more sense for me. And again, I hope that all makes sense as to what we're doing and why we're doing it. So if I comment this, this is going to be skybox color like so. Let's move that up a little bit like this. Then that is the main part of it done. All we need to do now is decide what we're going to apply the cell shading to. So that's also pretty simple. Let's just move this out a little bit more to give us a bit more space. What we're going to do is we need to again get some more scene textures. So we'll right click and get scene texture, like so. This one is going to be scene depth that we just got earlier, so scene depth. Then we'll duplicate this. This one is going to be custom depth instead of scene depth. So we'll get custom depth like so. And then duplicate it one final time with this one being post process input zero. So now we have these three scene textures here. Out of scene depth, we're going to come out of color, and we want to get a mask component, or a component mask, sorry, and we want to make sure only the R is ticked, so that's only the red value. Then we're going to duplicate that, connecting that into color of the custom depth, keeping it as just the R value, and then out of the top one, we're going to go into an if, so another if statement, with A is obviously going to be the mask of our scene depth, and B is going to be the mask of our custom depth. Then what we want to do is A is greater than B is the if statement from our skybox color we just created here. And A is less than B is just going to be the color of our post process input scene texture like so. Then the return of this if is going to go into the emissive color of our cell shading material and that should be it fully set up all we need to do to create our material. So let's hit apply and then we should see that this is now working. So again I'll go over it very quickly. We're just getting the lighting and seeing which needs to be at full brightness, which needs to be at half brightness so we can differentiate between light and darker areas of the map. Then we're going to be getting the skybox color so that isn't going to be affected by this. And then this here, let me comment this as well, is, is our depth compression, which in brackets again is only going to work for our render custom depth. So I'll show you what that means in a second, but that is how we're defining what uses the cell shading material. So let's once again apply this, and we can close this and actually get this to work. So what we need to do is add in a post-process volume into our level. So we're going to the add up here, go to volumes, and then get a post-process volume. Now if you've already got one, you, that's great, you can use it, but I'm just creating a new one here. Then in this, we want to search for post-process, and we've got post-process materials. We're going to add an array element, choosing an asset reference, and then we're going to choose our cell shading material we just created here. Now, you notice this, is, this hasn't made a difference yet, and that's because we only want it to work on things we're telling it to work on. So if I were to actually disable that, so it's going to work on everything, so if I just connect this straight into the emissive color, we should notice that it's now going to be doing on everything, although I might actually need to remove it from just here actually. If I apply, we can see that actually that's still not working and that's because of one other thing that we need to do is also on this post process volume, search for infinite. So we've got infinite extent unbound, tick that and now it's gonna work across the whole level, not just what is inside the post process volume. And again, you'll notice we've now got this working perfectly. We've got the post process volume on here. But you'll notice again, the, black, the sky is black. That's because we excluded this part of the code from it. So if this goes into emissive color instead, we should notice that the sky is no longer black. Everything else has cell shading. So you might want to leave it like this, has everything has cell shading. 
but if you want it to only be on certain objects so you can have a lot more customization and control over what has it, we'll connect in all of the code and you'll notice nothing has cell shading. So how do we now apply the cell shading onto these objects? Well, if we were to select one, for example, this robot, and we search for render custom depth, we're gonna tick that, and now we have cell shading applied to this robot. If we do that for everything else we want as well, for example, this cube or this wall, or maybe the floor, you'll notice cell shading is being applied to these objects. So you can really see the difference between these two here, like so. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything that we've wanted to do, what we've done is we've set up a basic cell shading material and managed to apply it to different objects if we wanted, or we can have it apply to everything, and we can exclude the sky or include the sky if we wanted as well. So it's really very easy to customize and change around for what you want, and you can also change some of the values in the material we set up as well to again customize it for how you want it to look. So thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.